Well, this thing began because my daughter was six years old when she first learned about climate change. And she very naively asked me, why can't we just build a machine that fixes this? Geostorm is, is a testament to your ability to marry the, um, the, the analog with the digital, the, the practical with the uh, FX. And I, I'm wondering, is that, does that skill come partly from the fact that you are a writer first and you can visualize something before it's even on the page? No, I think that comes from me being a nerd. <laughs> is you that know? right? Yeah, you know, because because <laughs> what do we do? We we we're constantly looking up gadgets and gizmos and yeah, it's like you know a lot of that, that thing and that gizmo thing. Yeah, it, and that's really what it is. Is that you? It's just as someone who's obsessed with those kind of things, you always think of you know what is the visual technology that could match the character story that you want to tell. And at the heart of this movie is really a political thriller um, and a story of two brothers. Yes. But the accoutrements of the story is a big giant summer popcorn movie. <laughs> and let's talk about the big giant. Uh, you're famous for doing movies that have uh, monster cast. You had like 1,215 crew members and Geostorm Independence Day is like 2,000. How do you, how do you manage such massive crews and at the same time have a singular vision on the movie itself? Um, lack of sleep. Um, I, 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 honestly, I, I can't claim a singular vision on this movie. I mean, the, the reality is a lot of really talented people worked on this film, uh, on the crew, in the cast, at the studio, at, at the Skydance. You know, a lot of really talented people all contributed to this movie. And I think really the, the director's chair on a picture like this is, is just ba basically being in mission control as all these talented people are bringing what they can bring to the table. You know, there, there's a second unit shooting while the first unit shooting and an action unit shooting while the reshoot unit is shooting. And then there's effects being done in London and effects being done in Canada and a whole new, another team in Los Angeles. And then we got to pick up and go to Hong Kong. So it's, it's really more co uh, coordinating a lot of talented people. That's, that's amazing. Um, when you immediately, when you first came up with this idea for Geostorm, this idea of this omnipresent, benevolent thing surrounding the Earth. At that very moment, was there instant trepidation in the idea of this thing surrounding the Earth? Well, this thing began because my daughter was six years old when she first learned about climate change. Mm -hmm. And she very naively asked me, why can't we just build a machine that fixes this? And trying to discuss the complexities of geoengineering science and and why it's difficult to do, why there's moral dilemmas about whether we should do it, why we don't know what the results of those will be down the line. I thought the best way to explain it to her is a fairy tale. Perfect. And that's really what Geostorm is. It's a fable about what could happen if we wait too long to deal with global warming. That's incredible. Uh, lastly, uh, you delivered this uh, movie as a director, a writer, and a producer. So when you sit back and think to yourself, who is Dean Devlin first? Are you a director first, a writer, or, or a producer? I am just a storyteller. I like to tell bedtime stories. And, you know, sometimes uh, the best way for me to do it is to write it and hand it off to someone else. Sometimes the best way is for me to, to, to get a director and a writer together. And sometimes I got to take it on all myself when everyone else thinks I'm nuts. So uh, <laughs> I, to me, it's, it's just about telling stories. And this story and this movie is just spectacular. Oh, thanks. Very thanks, kind thank you, you so that. much. It was very nice meeting you.